just in, former Vice President Joe Biden has tweeted out this video response uh, to the accusations that have come out in the last week that he's made some women feel uncomfortable. And so here is the video in full. Folks, in the coming month, I expect to be talking to you about a whole lot of issues, and I'll always be direct with you. But today, I want to talk about gestures of support and encouragement that I've made to women and some men that have made them uncomfortable. And I always try to be, uh, in my career, I've always tried to make a human connection. That's my responsibility, I think. I shake hands, I hug people, I, I grab men and women by the shoulders and say, you can do this. And, and, uh, and whether they're women, men, young, old, it's, it's the way I've always been. It's the way I've tried to show I care about them and I'm listening. And over the years, knowing what I've been through, the things that I've faced, I've found that scores, if not hundreds of people have come up to me and reached out for solace and comfort, something, something, anything that may help them get through the tragedy they're going through. And, and, uh, and, and so I, it's just, just who, who I am. And I've never thought of politics as cold and antiseptic. I, I've always thought it about connecting with people. As I said, shaking hands, uh, hands on the shoulder, a hug, uh, encouragement. And now, and now it, it's all about taking selfies together. Uh, you know, social norms have begun to change. They've shifted. And the boundaries of protecting personal space have been reset. And I get it. I get it. I hear what they're saying. I understand it. And I'll be much more mindful. That's my responsibility. My responsibility, and I'll meet it. But I'll always believe governing, quite frankly, life for that matter, is about connecting, about connecting with people. That won't change, but I will be more mindful and respectful of people's personal space. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing. I've worked my whole life to empower women. I've worked my whole life to prevent abuse. I've written a and, and so the idea that I can't adjust to the fact that personal space is important, more important than it's ever been, is, is, is just not thinkable. I will. I will. Let's talk all about this. I've got with me CNN chief political analyst Gloria Borger, presidential historian Douglas Brinkley, and CNN political commentator uh, Sabrina Siddiqui. And so um, let's dive right into it. Gloria, just starting with you, you know, this, this, was, this is an important moment for the yep. former vice president. Uh, he appeared incredibly genuine. Mm -hmm. Is this enough? Well, he did it on a video, uh, which is interesting, and why he didn't do it uh, to an audience or, or an interviewer is, is a question. But I think this is the authentic Joe Biden describing who he is and who he okay. has been over the years and taking on the generational issues, saying, you know, I used to hug people, now it's all about taking selfies, and using Nancy Pelosi's words, where she said the other day, you know, you have to respect personal space. I mean, he just picked that up from her, and uh, maybe she said it to him privately, and he repeated it a bunch of times and said, look, I have to adjust to this, uh, mm -hmm. and I will, but I can't change who I am as a politician because, for me, it's always been about connecting, and that is true about Joe Biden. Sabrina, you've been covering him. What do you think? Well, it's important to emphasize that no one has accused uh, former Vice President Joe Biden of sexual assault or harassment, but right. what this speaks to is that the conversation around what is and what isn't acceptable behavior toward women has changed, particularly in the aftermath of the Me Too movement. And I think that Biden got the message loud and clear that his statements up until this point were insufficient. It was not enough to simply apologize for unintentionally making women feel uncomfortable. He had to take more ownership of his behavior and commit to some kind of change. Now, prominent Democrats have been very careful to say that they don't think that the allegations uh, disqualify uh, Biden. I think a lot of them were waiting to see how he would address this issue and whether he would take it on more directly. But it does remain to be seen what kind of damage this may have inflicted on what is widely expected to be his third run for the presidency. Doug, do you think it's enough? You've been in Biden world talking to a lot of people. Um, I think it's a really good opening salvo. It was a great um, video. He covered all the key points, but as to Gloria's point, he's going to have to talk about this some more. Yeah. Anytime he does the major interview, if you're interviewing him, you're going to ask about it because mm -hmm. there are going to be thousands of photos that come out of him hugging and touching. I mean, he is of the generation of kissing babies, pressing the flesh. 
And, you know, he's been doing a cancer moonshot, and he's talking to people that are afflicted with cancer a lot, and he grabs them a lot. Sure. And, and, um, and so, I, but it means to me that if Biden gets the Democratic nomination, he's going to have to have a, a woman as a vice president. There's no way that he, he has to address this gender problem. It's going to be lingering. So somebody like Stacey Abrams or Kamala Harris or Amy Klobuchar could very well be a VP if Biden uh, procured the Democratic nomination. That's that's a big if. Does this signal to you, Doug, that this is a man who is running for president? Yeah. I think he's running for president. Yeah. yeah. And he's ready to roll. And this was a good move. I was way, if he didn't do it this afternoon, I think it would have been a blown opportunity. I think he got it in under the whistle with a pretty good <laughs> response. But but he's going for it. And, uh, and he's going to be one of the big three in the Democratic. There's no way Biden's going to be shrinking to the 1% that Donald Trump tattoos him with. He spent years building bridges in a state like Iowa, Joe Biden. He is a, a Catholic politician who does the Mississippi River belt well. Same area Klobuchar is trying to hit, meaning um, Davenport and Dubuque. And he stayed in touch with farmers and old time Iowa caucus leaders. So he's going to be well received when he gets into the Iowa game in New Hampshire is basically right up in his backyard. And it's in Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren's backyard too. New Hampshire will be very interesting. Gloria, I hear you want to jump in. You, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, he all but announced uh, in this Wasn't statement Wasn't that what that was? He said, yeah. folks, in the coming months, I'm expecting to talk to you about a whole lot of issues. Well, what does there that say to you? <laughs> I mean, that's that's as close to an announcement, uh, a pre-announcement as you're, as you're going to get. I mean, it's very clear from this uh, that he's running and that he wants to attack this head on. And, and you know, he's going to have to deal with it over and over and over again. Um, but it was um, it was the apology uh, that a lot of people I think have been have been waiting for and and taking responsibility for this, saying, look, this is my responsibility, and don't think I can't change. I can, you know, but I am who I am. But he's running. There's no doubt about it. Sabrina, close us out. Final thought. Well, I think that this does pave the way for an interesting debate among Democrats, uh, particularly in the Democratic field, about how they want to address uh, Me Too and the spectrum of inappropriate behavior. They had a, more of a zero tolerance approach to former Senator Al Franken. Now, the allegations he faced were very different in nature. He was accused by multiple women of groping, uh, by at least one of forcibly uh, kissing her with uh, former Vice President Joe Biden. Like we said, uh, the allegations have not been uh, sexual in nature. They've been more framed as a violation of personal space. So it does sort of force Democrats to have a more nuanced conversation around uh, allegations of inappropriate behavior and to define a, maybe a more distinctive platform uh, when it comes to the Me Too movement. Sabrina, thank you. Gloria, thank you. And Doug sure. Brinkley, everyone, he's got a new book out, American Moonshot, Douglas Brinkley. Good to have you on. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.